Hi, uh, my name is Nick Woods. I work uh, for a company called Red Prairie, uh, and I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I want to learn a little bit more about the food chain and food safety and uh, all that good stuff about how, how our food gets from the field to our fork, uh, supposedly. So uh, we're going to go on a little trip. Uh, I've got a couple of people to meet with. We're going to go and talk to the wire in Seattle first. Uh, after that, we're going to travel a little bit more, uh, and I'm going to get all the answers that I'm looking for on my own. So, come on, Chutney. Let's go. So we made it to Seattle. Uh, we're going to this place called the Columbia Center, and we're meeting with a guy named Bill Marler, who's handled a ton of the different food safety cases that we've been talking about. So. Why don't you follow me in here? We're going to go up to the 66th floor. Like any little kid, Jacob loved crackers, peanut butter crackers, and he started eating them. And within 12 to 24 hours after eating the crackers, um, the salmonella had built up enough in his body, in his gut, to make him start to get sick. We wanted to hear about the experience firsthand, so we drove down to Portland to meet the family mentioned by Bill on the radio report, Peter and Brandy Hurley, along with their son, Jake. It wasn't until we saw blood in his diarrhea that we took him into the pediatrician. And then it was a Saturday when the pediatrician called and said that the lab results had come back positive for salmonella. Is this gonna be it? Is, is this just gonna blow up in our hands and, and they're gonna die? Um, right now we sort of get inundated with you know, a peanut recall, oh, a hamburger recall, uh, a spinach recall. And after a while, we just sort of like going, what can we eat? And one of the things you got to remember about E. coli 0157 is that 10 to 50 bacterium can make you sick, can kill you. And 100,000 of them would fit on the head of a pin. If you look here, each one of these circles is a colony of E. coli 0157. So literally millions of bacteria in each one of these colonies. It takes about 10 cells, one to 10 cells to make you sick. So the Hurley family had been interviewed about Jake's exposures before I, I went there, but we talked to them. And at that point, when he was interviewed, we were already focused on the, uh, these kind of products. So we were not surprised to find out that in fact, he had been eating these kind of uh, crackers. Uh, the changing markets means that you're exposed to a wider potential range of not just the pathogens, kind of the same bugs whether or not usually when you're in Mexico or Thailand or the United States, but it's just a bigger and bigger system for agencies, uh, regulatory agencies like the FDA to try and police that on behalf of American consumers becomes increasingly difficult. So what should food producers be doing to make our food safer? mandatory recalls. I don't think anybody in the United States really would ever think that it's up to the individual producer of a tainted food product to decide whether they do or don't want to recall it. Once you find out that you've put a poison into the food stream, why should there be any option for you to do anything but recall that product? Well, Clearly, I'm not the only one thinking about this food safety thing. The issue is exploding. Congress is all over it. Lawyers, labs, and epidemiologists spend their careers managing and improving the process. From my front row seat, I know one thing for sure now. This is complex stuff. The supply chain today has more ins and outs than a lot of people give it credit for. If attorneys like Bill Marler and families like the Hurleys have anything to say about it, Recalls on food are going to become more and more common, and that's the way it should be to keep people safe. But what about the people in the food industry? Recalls aren't cheap, and it's not like every processing plant that misses 10 or 15 cells on a single peanut is actually a harbor for filth and disease. The lesson is that in today's world, food suppliers and manufacturers need to stay smart. To hear pros like Bill Keen and Mansour Samadpour talk about it, a recall doesn't have to mean pulling every product on the shelf. After all, people like me don't want to hesitate before eating a peanut butter sandwich. And I don't want to quit feeding chutney or favorite dog food. So what do we do? Introduce irradiation. Educate businesses on how track and trace software can save them from a devastating recall. All these things seem like obvious first steps to cut down on the outbreaks and to feel safe. It's a big job, no doubt, 
but knowing there are options takes the sting out of the fear of the unknown.